welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a really different one in terms of I'm going to be talking about 10 things that you are doing that are making your grades worse. Rather than telling you what is making your grades better, I'm going to be saying what is setting you back from getting the top grades. Obviously take these with a pinch of salt, I don't mean that you shouldn't do these all the time, but from my experience they can be what stands in the way between you and a good grade, so listen up. <laughs> Give this video a huge thumbs up if you want some more study related videos more based around habits and lifestyle rather than specific revision tips because I think sometimes I do like revision tips like folders, flashcards and stuff but I think sometimes time management and lifestyle are actually more important so give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy this video and want some more of the same type. But before we start I wanted to say that this video is very kindly sponsored by Live Quiz. So Live Quiz is basically a quiz app where you can test your knowledge on so many different themes and actually win real life prizes. So quizzes are run every day at 7.30 and on Wednesdays and Fridays there's also a quiz at 1 o'clock. It's really easy to get involved, you just have to download the app and you can challenge your friends to a test of general knowledge and honestly it's such a good way to unwind whilst also keeping that brain stimulated, you know. What I really like about this quiz app is that even if you lose a game, you can carry on playing and you still get the chance to earn points and climb up the weekly leaderboard because I feel like sometimes when you've lost a game and then you just have to sit there, it's kind of sad. But I actually really like that you can still contribute to winning prizes even when you've lost the game. If you want to download Live Quiz, of course, I'll put all the links that you need and everything down in the description. Thank you so much to Live Quiz for sponsoring this video and I hope you guys enjoy getting hooked to these quiz games as much as I do. So now on to the main part of the video I have got here on my phone a list of 10 things that you're doing that are probably not helping you when it comes to revising for that big test or for your A-levels or whatever. So here we go. The first bad habit is failing to prioritise and by this I mean if you've got something due in tomorrow and you've got something that's due in in four days, doing the thing that's due in four days first because you prefer it. I'm guilty of it, we're all guilty of it, you know when you've got like an essay due tomorrow that on, on a topic that you don't particularly like and then you have like a project due for the week after on something that you're really interested in so you'll do the project and then suddenly you've done the project, great, but now you have like T minus 10 seconds to write the essay. So one of my number one tips would be to make sure that when you are writing down the work that you have due in, always write it in list of when it is due in, so always start with the thing that is due first and no matter how rubbish it might be, like about how horrible the task is, always try and do it in order of when it's due because that way you are working to your deadlines and you're staying at a nice pace behind them rather than a deadline coming really quick and then you do one that's like ages away and it can get a bit messy, so don't do that. <laughs> Next one is kind of similar to this but it's one that I think that actually trips a lot of people up and it is not having like a to-do list. So for me personally every single day no matter what day it is I have a running to-do list on the notes on my phone where I'm writing down everything that I need to do that day, everywhere I need to be and just keeping that going. So by having a running to-do list it means you can add and just subtract like as you're going and if you don't have a to-do list how are you supposed to know what you're going to get done in a day? So for me personally I'll, I have one because I'll be like I need to write this article for the newspaper, I need to edit this video, I need to do this translation and that way I've got a very clear idea of how I need to be spending my time. If I don't have a to-do list I'll be like oh well I'll just go to the bar and go shopping and stuff and then you forget what you actually need to be doing whereas if you have a to-do list it's in the front of your mind and it means that you will actually do the things that you said you're gonna do. So to-do lists people, if you don't have a to-do list or a planner what are you doing? Like how, oh, oh actually I want to know like if you don't have a to-do list like how do you remember what you're doing because I actually can't remember if I don't put it on to-do list. The next habit is not consolidating your notes as you go along. So this is basically the idea of that when you're doing classwork you kind of do the homework and you put it in a folder and then you leave it to when you're revising. I cannot stress enough, especially when you're at school and you're doing A-levels and GCSEs, as you're going you need to be consolidating your notes, so you need to be making them neat, putting them in a decent format, at least organising your folders so that when you do come to revise you don't have to spend the first few days of your revision like sorting out your notes and making them neat and making them understandable, like make sure you are trying at least to, as you go along, help your future self by making your notes coherent, making them like easy to revise from, all of these things are things that people don't do and then it comes to exam season and they waste all this time that they could have done beforehand making new notes and trying to tidy up notes when 
they should already be tidy as they are. You know what I mean? The next bad habit is trying to work solidly without any form of break. I'm not saying have a break every 10 minutes because that's probably not going to help, but depending on your time span, your time span could be anything between 25 minutes to like three hours. For me personally, I can work for about two and a half hours, maybe three, pretty solidly, as in like solidly enough, um, maybe a couple of ch cheeky looks at Facebook, but generally pretty solidly for three hours, and then I will take an hour long break, but I know for some people they prefer to do 25 minutes and a five minute break, some people like to do 45 minutes and a 15 minute break, however it works for you, one of the habits that will actually not help you get good grades is working and working and working without a break because a there reaches a certain point where you're not actually paying attention b it's just less time effective and c if you're not having a break you're actually not going to get as much revision done during your day because you'll get really tired out and then you won't want to do any more whereas if you have a break you can keep that stamina going it'd be like trying to run a marathon without drinking any water like you're just not going to do that um so make sure that when you are taking breaks you're taking them regularly enough that your revision doesn't become ineffective the next one is having your phone near you when you study. Look, I'm not even gonna sit here and say that I don't do that. In fact, most of the time when I'm studying, my phone is next to me, unless I'm like revising. So for me, when I'm working, my phone is always next to me just because like, I'm just not in a rush to really get it done and I don't mind it being a bit more casual and whatever. When you're revising, however, there is no bigger distraction than your phone and social media. I literally, I delete Twitter off my phone, I delete Facebook, I shut my phone off, I throw it to the other side of the room and actually, honestly, I think it's nicer in that way because it means that when you're revising, you're focusing on revising and then you can look forward to like talking to your friends and stuff later rather than you're really trying to get into a topic and you just keep getting messages pinging at you and actually that means that you're not absorbing anything because it takes your brain a fair few minutes to get back into that concentration zone so if you actually add up how many minutes your brain has spent going in and out of concentration it's not looking good honey it's not looking good the next one is conflating work and social time and what i mean by this one is making your workspace social and making your social space about work so when you're in the library you're sat with your friends like fair enough sit by your friends because like, you know, you don't want to be completely alone, but you're talking, you're chatting, like, the library becomes a place where you, like, meet up socially in terms of, like, you're working, but you're just talking. That means that you're not getting any work done, and it also means that your social time is being spent in a work environment, and the same thing can happen when you're having free time, but all you're doing is talking about work, or you've got, like, emails up in the background or whatever. Seriously cannot recommend enough when you're working work and like put the effort into the work Don't do anything else and when you're socializing don't be thinking about work When you split the two up it means that your revision is more effective and you're getting proper downtime Which is so essential for good grades like I literally cannot stress to you how much you need to be relaxing So if you have effective relaxation and effective study It's gonna help you a lot the next one and I think this is my biggest one that I feel like really does not help you at all is having Netflix on or TV on in the background when you're working. I don't really understand how anyone can say that having TV on in the background is not distracting, especially if it's a show that you like. You are not going to be paying attention and this kind of links to the whole conflating leisure and work time. Like, if you're if you've got Brooklyn Nine-Nine on in the background, you are objectively going to be watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine and actually like the human brain does this thing where you'll have been sat watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine for like 10 minutes and your brain won't have even registered that you stopped working. Even now, when I've got like YouTube video on, while I'm, while I'm trying to do like an email or something, I'll find myself watching the YouTube video for like 7 minutes and then I'm like, oh my gosh, I was doing the email and your brain just instantly switches out of that mode of like, I'm working. Don't have a TV on, don't have YouTube on, do not watch Netflix. Save that for when you've got some free time and you can give the TV show your full attention and you can give your work your full attention. It's a win-win situation. The next one is a really lethal one and one that people do not realise is actually so bad and it's working in bed. So my bed is here and I will only ever work in bed if I'm like physically poorly and I need to like do emails and stuff. For me now, my bed is where I sit and I watch Netflix or I sleep and that is it. That is that is what my bed is for. Oh, I've got, got an email. So I mean, I get so distracted. Um, but yeah, so my bed is my bed and my desk is where I work and obviously some people don't even like working in their room but I'm not going to say that that's negative because I work a lot in my room and I feel like it's fine. Um, but what I would say is that working in bed is going to be lethal, A, because then your chill space is becoming a workplace and you're going to be very distracted, and B, because you are just going to fall asleep 
like we all know it if you're in bed you're gonna fall asleep you're gonna have a nap and that's not what we want during work time no no the next one is having nobody to hold you to account and what I mean by this is a lot of people have their revision plans quite relatively private and that means that if they do end up watching Netflix and procrastinating for hours on end then nobody is there to hold them to account and hence they keep doing it for me personally if I'm saying I'm gonna work I've said to my mates oh, I'm gonna go do some work now so if they catch me procrastinating or they catch me at the bar when I've got an essay due they know that my deadline is so when my friends say to me you need to do some work I'm much more likely to do it because they're like holding me to account for procrastinating does that make sense like as in one of the biggest things like you can do that will end up being of detriment to yourself is not telling people when your deadlines are not telling people when your exams are because then you've got nobody to tell you to revise and sometimes you need external motivation no matter how internally motivated we perceive ourselves to be sometimes it's just not the case you know and the last one is a bit of a wholesome one it's kind of cheesy but the biggest no you can do is to work too much and burn yourself out because actually long term that is going to really negatively impact your grades I do it a lot. I do. I I have weeks where I work way too hard and I'm burning the candle at both ends and I'm going out and socialising a lot but I'm also working a lot and I'm also trying to juggle YouTube and I'm also trying to juggle the paper and I'm trying to juggle everything and I just burn out and then that means that I have three or four days where I'm physically too exhausted to work aka today and then long term if you'd just spent a little bit less time working earlier in the week then you would have been able to do a lot more work later in the week so say for example I did like nine hours a day for four days and then I did nothing for three days I probably would have got more work done if I had done like six hours a day and then done that consistently rather than having periods of being really really intense and then burning out so don't burn yourself out look after yourself sleep you know you know all the things because burning yourself out is actually one of the least productive things you can do and Jack did a video the other day where he said he burnt himself out and he's doing this thing called active relaxation and that is something that I really think is undervalued in the study community is there's, there's two types of relaxation, there's relaxation when you've got stuff to do and you know that you're procrastinating which isn't proper relaxation because you've got the underlying stress that you're not supposed to be relaxing and there is taking an active decision to take a day or an afternoon off and completely freeing that of guilt and not only is that short period because you're not procrastinating and it's not like loads of little procrastinating periods you also are fully relaxing which means that you can then get back into work and work for longer so definitely definitely if you take one thing from this video is to just pace yourself, take some time off. I'm having Saturday off this week, like completely off. I've got no plans, no social plans, nothing. I'm just going to stay right in that bed there and watch Netflix. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was useful. I'm not trying to attack anyone in any way. I do a lot of the things that I've just said that you shouldn't do. It's normal. Um, it's more just a video to say that there are habits that you can get out of that will obviously like you need to revise to get the grades but by cutting out some of the negative habits you'll find that it's easier to get those grades than you thought it was and a huge thank you to live quiz for sponsoring this video of course i'll put the link in the description so if you want to you can go and watch it but i think other than that it's that's me done for today requests please put requests down in the comments if you have any because i always want to know what you guys want to see more of and i'll see you very very soon with a new video have a lovely week guys bye Mwah.